Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. I did a video a while back showing how you can test a motor using an oscilloscope um, if you don't have a, an LC meter. And today I want to show you what a broken motor looks like when testing it on the oscilloscope because last time I didn't actually show, I showed how a good motor looked, how the waveform should look. And I'm going to show you how a broken motor looks. So what we have here is quite simple. We've got a broken motor. This one has got a lot of damage, uh, it completely fried, and I've just taken it and put some N3 nuts in the bottom, or bolts in the bottom at least, and attached to the vise. And then the vise goes on top of the drill press, and I've just extended the wires here, which I can then attach to the oscilloscope probes to make it a little bit more um, robust, let's say. And then I'm just going to attach this, so let's get to that now. Okay, so after a lot of messing about with the settings, um, I had some problems with the acquire. I was in the wrong thing. I was using some averaging. That's why I kept dropping down. So nevertheless, here we are. Um, what I've got here is the motor attached to the oscilloscope. I'm not sure which of the coils or how many are broken in that motor. I just know that it's completely fried. Later on, we can open it up and take a look if the findings match up with the reality of what's inside the motor. Uh, anyway, we have channel 1, 2, and 3. Um, they're all set to 500 millivolts per division. So each one of these squares represents 500 millivolts being generated if the wave gets to that point. Um, and I'm going to start the drill press now. And let's see what happens. It's going to get noisy. But... Good. So what do we see here? We see, remember they're all the same, they're running on the same heights essentially. So we should, in on a good motor you'd see that all three peaks are the same height because all the coils are the same. But what we see here is that one of them is high, the purple one, channel three, and the other two are low. So my assumption is that <clears throat> these two, channel one and two, so two sets of coils are actually burnt out because um, what would happen is that these ones are shorting out because the insulation burnt off. It's not as though the coil actually burnt away. Um, they are still making contact um, and they are still working as such as coils because it's still spinning and creating magnetic field. But because the coils are shorted out, they seem to be much, let's say, shorter shorter um, meaning that they have less windings to create the magnetic field um, which would make the power in this oscilloscope example and conversely when attaching an ESC a speed controller and running the motors you would then not have as much power running through them and despite that they're actually burnt out so which means that just you having one solid piece of copper instead of all the windings which create the magnetic field. That's the assumption at least. So here you see this pretty picture. There now channel 1 and 2 are now at 50 millivolts per division. Channel 3 is still at 500 millivolts per division showing that we have a 10 times less magnetic field being generated by the first two coils as opposed to the third coil. Right, I think next would be to look inside the motor. I mean, if you expect it to, to not see anything being generated at all, that's not the way it works because it's still, it's still creating a magnetic field when it spins. It's still doing that. It's just on a much lower level, on a much smaller amount because of the fact that the coils have completely burnt out. And therefore, they have less windings essentially inside them to make the magnetic fields, which will either spin the motor or, in this case, generate the power that comes out of it. So I think next we can actually open up the motors and see if those findings match up. There's a lot of strong magnets in these motors. 
what we have here is a mess. So we have these two coils completely burned. And now I think we can actually trace which ones those belong to. So number one. So if we recall this one. Right, so there we have it. That is what a motor looks like when on the oscilloscope when the coils are all where a burnt, that's what a burnt up motor looks like. On the oscilloscope, repeating the same test as last time, which I did with a healthy motor. Now you've seen it with an unhealthy motor. So Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon on the next video.